Hi, I'm Nicole Adams, and I'm a bioinformatics PhD student at North Carolina State University, and here is my introduction to DNA-seq. There are many ways gene expression in our cells is regulated. DNA changes conformations, so certain genes are expressed at different stages of development, in tissues, and in certain environmental conditions. Here we have chromatin, which contains nucleosomes. The nucleosome are made up of four proteins called histones that are wrapped around with DNA. The condensation and relaxation of chromatin, nucleosomes coming together or spreading apart respectively, is what changes accessibility for transcriptional machinery to bind to DNA. To change DNA availability, proteins come in to make modifications to DNA or histones. Other than proteins that make modifications to DNA or histones, there are regulatory sequences of DNA that can control gene expression. Those are the sequences recognized by transcription factors that help recruit RNA polymerase to turn genes on. For genes to be transcribed, transcription factor binding sites need to be devoid of nucleosomes and accessible to transcriptional machinery. DNA-seq allows us to locate open regions of chromatin and determine the sequences of regulatory elements. Before we get to see how those regulatory elements can be identified, we need to conduct a DNA extraction from an organism of interest, a common house plant. Here, we will grind and lyse plant cells to isolate the nuclei. The nuclei are then treated with an enzyme called DNase-1. DNase-1 is an endonuclease, an enzyme that cleaves the phosphodiester bond within the polynucleotide chain. DNase 1 predominantly targets open regions of DNA, aka DNase hypersensitive sites, that are devoid of histones and thus exposed to enzymes. These fragments will be purified via gel electrophoresis and used to construct a sequencing library. To prepare our samples for sequencing, we must add adapters to the DNA fragments. Adapters are short oligomers that allow DNA to bind specifically to the surface of an alumina flow cell. PCR amplification of the fragments produces DNA clusters across the flow cell. Sequencing of the four strands is performed via DNA synthesis by DNA polymerase. Fluorescently tagged nucleotides compete for the addition to the growing DNA chain. Once the nucleotide is incorporated, it emits a fluorescent signal. The intensity of the signal and the color of the fluorescent dye tells the sequencer what nucleotide was incorporated. In a single-end sequencing experiment, this process, termed sequencing by synthesis, is repeated until the desired read length is achieved. The sequencing data from the Illumina sequencing machine come back in a form of a FASTQ file that contains the nucleotide sequences of the amplified DNA fragments. These files more commonly referred to as reads, are used to see where the DNA fragments are across the entire genome of our house plant. Placing reads along the genome of the species of interest is referred to as mapping. A pattern of mapped reads you should see in DNA-seq are piles of identical or overlapping sequences corresponding to specific genomic regions. These regions are the DNA's hypersensitive sites in the genome that play an active role in transcription. They correspond to open areas of chromatin where gene regulatory regions are located. Accordingly, DNA-seq does have a bias for proximal promoter regions where a majority of transcription factors are known to bind. Bioin bioinformatic approaches can be used to identify candidate DNA elements within DNA's hypersensitive sites to study gene regulation and correlate chromatin accessibility with gene expression levels determined by RNA-seq. That's it for my introduction to DNA-seq. I hope this introduction helped you better understand how DNA-seq can be used to determine chromatin accessibility and find DNA regulatory regions.